Hi folks and welcome back. As you can see I've finished mining out the uh, all the rock that was all the stone that was here from this boulder and I've started filling in the hole with a bunch of cobble that I have left over because mining typically generates a lot of cobble a lot more than I'll ever need. So I'll for the top layer I'll put dirt on top so it looks nice. And to get enough of the stuff I ended up taking out about a third third to a half of the boulder that was up there as well. Anyway, so I have lots of stone to finish working on the house here. And I also did uh, run around checking all of our uh, crops again, like the wild crops that were growing out there. And they were pretty much all done. So I collected them up and their seeds, and you, know, you can probably see it here. So I have some more grains here, some squash, some more onions, garlic, potatoes. Oh yeah, this is what I want to show. Something else that I want to show, rather. Uh, a couple of episodes back, I made up a whole bunch of loaves of cornbread, and I set it up so they all would expire at the same time. Um, I had one in my inventory as well, but I accidentally ate it, so we can't look at it. But we can see this one sitting here has now gone bad. It went bad about three days ago, I think. It went rotten. We've got one here in this vessel, or a bunch of them here in this vessel. If we look at them, though... Whoops, wrong vessel. Oh, here, oh, here. Here's the vessel here. And you can see that they're still good. They're going to decay in one more day. But so they did last several days longer than the... Uh, than the food that was just sitting out in the chest. So putting them in the vessel does let them last longer. Oh yeah, this can also show you some of the more, some of the other things I picked up. A bunch more lemons as well. So, okay. So I think the first thing we want to do is get a little bit further on the house here. Um... Yeah, that, that. And we already have the wall at that side, so... Is this going to be one big window, or do I want two smaller ones here? One, two, three, four, five, six. They would be different sizes, so... Let's just go with one big one then. And how high am I going to have to go? Well, I want the window to be too high. And then there's going to have to be the uh, frame across the top. Ah! I fall. I, got, I fall. Go boom. Yeah, you'll be able to tell quickly that uh, I'm never any good at Minecraft parkour. This is the limit of my skill. Uh, I'm going to have to do this from down below. Okay. I like lots of glass in my home. So we're going to fill all that in with glass. For that we're going to need some sand. Um, let's quickly call up our map here. Oh yeah, we can get sand down on these beaches. So I'll run over and pick up a bunch of sand. Just double check here to make sure I don't already have some. Nope, nope. And we have plenty of shovel to do it with, so let's go do that. Back in a bit. Okay, so we've got the sand. And now at this point, you might begin to be able to see... Oh, I need the charcoal. Where is it over here? You may begin to see that there's a bit of method to my madness. Uh, well, I'd probably put it here. Yeah, there we go. By building the forge first, not only did I 
you know, make it easier to figure out the layout of the house. But that also means, where's our sand here? There we go. There we go. That we can use it to make the glass to go in the windows. For the roof, I'm not sure yet. Probably wood for the roof. Douglas fir planks. I got lots and lots of Douglas fir and I can always get more. Oh, well, actually, this is about to be ready. This set of glass, isn't it? Yeah. All right, I'm not sure how much we need. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18 times 2, 36. We need 36 glass. And I've got an idea for how I want the, uh, the roof to look. I don't want to step it up. I don't want to actually use stairs. Like I want to have a peak, but I don't want to use stairs that's steeper than I like. So I was thinking of just going up by half slabs and see how that works out. Yeah, how do I want the the peak to run? Well, since that's the front door, it should really run from left to right, and that'll give it more room to rise as well, so we'll do it that way. And 36, this will give us 30, so two more sets of this and we'll have enough glass. And I guess I can start making some half slabs, eh? Well, that's not how they're made. I need the, uh, I actually need the workbench for that. Won't be able to do that for much longer. Keep hitting the coal instead of the glass. Oh, and I still need to finish the floor off too. So let's find some more Douglas fir. No. That's, hang on. That's Douglas fir. And is as is all of that. Put it into some plank blocks, or into planks, and then put the planks and plank blocks. Grab the set of glass, and we have one more set to go. Yeah, so actually, let's finish up the floor here. Good timing, huh? Yeah, it's almost like I've done this before. Okay, that's good enough for that. We can throw our glass in, and this will actually start looking a little bit more like a house. Or at least, like, you know, the big gray stone bunkers that I call houses at any rate. Yeah, if you came into this channel looking for some, like, fancy builds, then you clearly haven't watched this channel before. For me, fancy is putting the peaked roof on. That'll be, like, the uh, height of sophistication as far as I'm concerned. There, where's the rest of it? There it is. Okay. Ta-da! Oh, that opening's actually too high, isn't it? All right, we can handle that. We have the technology. And we will rock you. No, let's get that out of the way for the moment. Grab some doors. <laughs> okay, let's... 
There's one door. Second door. may not have a roof over our heads, but we can hide from the animals if they can ever come after us. Okay, let's finish this up now. Okay, if the roof's going to peak up like that... Take me up, probably beside the door. Okay. Ladders. I don't have any ladders. Well, that's an oversight that needs to be rectified. Uh, let's do up a few. Actually, I'm going to need a lot, so not right now, but I will soon need a lot. So let's do them this way. That's good enough. All right. I got some half slabs and I've got some full slabs. I guess we can start with a full slab here. And here, so we'll run full slabs along. Let's do a little bit just to get a feel for it. And half slabs, ouch, down below. This looks like it has berries on it, but I don't think it should. Let's have a look. Oh, it did! I thought I'd already collect... I thought these only bore berries twice. Okay. Maybe I'm, either that's changed or I was always wrong about it. Oop, need water. Hang on. Might as well eat the berries while I've got them. There we go. Okay, let's go back up. So the next layer is going to be a slab like that, and then, and then another full one like that. Yeah, I need some more. Going to go through a lot of wood on this one. Uh, that's oak. And that's maple. Oh, I think I have some over here. Maple. Oak. Ah, Douglas fir. There we go. Stealing from Peter to pay Paul. Wait a minute. More Douglas fir. And more. Good times, good times. All the rest of this is what? Maple and oak? Yep, okay. Don't worry, I won't force you to watch the entire build here. I just want to get to a point where we have a good sense of what it's going to look like. Alright. Alright, so that will be the half slab hanging out. And that takes us up the next one. 
And then a half step up. our half step here so we go another half step there ah oh, perfect okay there's that ladder how's that look yeah that's good. Doesn't really go with the andesite. I'll have to at some point look to see if there's a grayer wood that I could use. It's a bit too bright for the andesite, but that'll help lighten the gloom a bit. And I should probably have at least, yeah, I should have an eaves out here as well, so. Like I say, lots of wood. <laughs> oh, but... Um, why don't you go up all the way? That's right. And a half slab here. And in theory, I guess I should have the overhang come out beyond the chimney, but eh. I actually, no, that won't happen because the chimney is going to go up through it in the end. I want to extend it up so you'll actually see a chimney projecting from the outside. Okay, so that's how that's going to go. I'll uh, finish that off either off camera or at high speed so you don't have to sit through all of it. The next thing I want to have a look at... Oak saplings, maple saplings. Ah, oh, Douglas fir saplings. I already have them on me. Good. All right, let's come over here. So I'm almost done clearing out this area here. Let's just finish it off. And I want to do an experiment to see if I can take advantage of that thing where felling one tree will fill several at the same time. I noticed it seems to happen mostly with these Douglas firs. I haven't really noticed it happening with the oaks. And I don't know whether it's an effect specific to the firs or whether just coincidence or what it is. But since I've seen it happening with the firs, I will use them for the experiment. Plunk. There we go. Alright. Let's lay down a row of these things. Or two rows, rather. So. Not sure how long it'll take them to grow at this spacing. I have five left. Oh, in fact, I've already screwed up spacing. Really? Oh, well, they're not always exactly in the center of the block? Oh, that's kind of confusing. I should really get rid of these two guys as well, then. Or to lose this axe. I think I have one in reserve, though. Yeah, I uh, smelted a bunch more copper in between episodes and uh, made up more tools. So I have another axe, another pickaxe. I don't think I've ever run out of, like, fully used up a saw in this game. Even though it feels like I use the saw a lot. Like you can see here, with everything I've sawn so far, it's barely gone down from this copper saw. So there's never really been a need for me to 
that I can recall to make a higher level saw like out of bronze or anything like that. But all the other tools, they wear out quickly. Okay, Does that give you enough room? So we'll let those guys grow for a few days and see where we end up. And that will coincidentally provide us with the wood we need to finish the roof as well. Okay. Uh, let's see. Do I have enough blocks to give me at least one little corner where I'm not standing in the rain? <laughs> Um, actually, if I, I should use half, yeah, yeah, I want the ceiling to vault up, so I'll use just half blocks on the inside. That should do the trick. Can I reach that high? I think I can, yeah. Hmm. I don't like the lighting again here. If I put a torch up, does that go away? Oh, okay. Well, actually, it's still... Oh, well, lighting in Minecraft has always been an issue. Well, actually, it's probably demonstrate another thing, which I don't think is true in regular Minecraft, if I remember correctly, but has always been true in TFC. Because I'm pretty sure rain will put these things, put torches out. Does it no longer do that in TNG? Doesn't appear to. We'll see what happens. Um, one thing you may have noticed, though, is that torches do go out after, I think it's 24 hours, after one day. It might be two days. And that's a real pain for mining. You put all these torches down to mine. So we'll, if we ever find some pumpkins, we'll address that. But right now we just have to remember. Like, if I come over here in the house, although actually I think I just recently lit it. No, it's already gone out again. So I have to keep relighting it every day or two. So, Okay, next thing we're going to work on is to advance with our materials, with our metals that is, we need to uh, find some flux as I mentioned before. So what I do is I do these things called that I call core samples. Um, the way TFC sets up the geology, in most places there's three layers of rock beneath the surface. In some cases it'll be just one, but or sorry, just two. But usually it's three. And uh, so you can dig... We know the one on top because it's the one that all the stones and boulders locally are made around, made out of. So if I pick up this, it's andesite rock so we know that that's the that's going to be the top layer immediately under the the dirt and gravel so we have to dig down a ways how many that's not enough ladders i'm going to need more ladders we have to dig down a ways to find out what all the others are so in searching for different types of rock i could just run around across the landscape searching for them on the surface and maybe build a, actually the best way of doing that is usually to build a boat since you can travel farther distances that way. Um, but the biomes tend to be, or I don't know if you could call them biomes, the geomes. <laughs> the, the rock layers tend to be very large. Um, so you'd have to, you have to travel pretty far distances to see a change. Like if I look at the map here, let's zoom all the way out. Yeah, you can see it over here. Um, all this sand over here, you can tell by the color of the sand, it's all the same gray. That's mean that's andesite sand, meaning this is all this area around here. Oh, I'm hoping my cursor shows up on the capture. That's all andesite rock in the top layer. But over here, it's a lighter color. In fact, we should run over there and find out what that is. That's what we'll do first, actually. Because it could turn out to be something we can use. It might be a flex rock, in which case we don't have to do all the other stuff. Um, so, and this biome here, I keep saying biome, but I don't think it corresponds directly with biome. Um, 
So you'd have to sail or walk quite a ways, say, in this direction before it would change over to another type of rock. So if you only looked at surface rocks, you'd be stuck looking at it for a long time. So let's quickly run over here and check in and see what this is. And uh, maybe we'll luck out. Whoops. Lost my bearings already. I want to go west and a tiny bit south. I am terrible with directions. My partner and I have this joke where whenever I get lost, we say, well, it was a direction thing. Okay, west and a bit south over here. And that's why I have to have the mini maps. Like I have to have the big map, or at very least a mini map, but I need the big maps. Because otherwise, I would just never find my way back to anywhere. There's some Minecrafters I've watched on YouTube where, like, they can run all over the place and they never leave themselves. Let's come this way. They never leave themselves any signs or markers and they don't play with a mini map and yet they still know exactly where they are and where to go. That is a useful trait. Oh, there's some more tomato plants over here. Nice. Well, let's grab them. Oh, my inventory is full. Drat, drat, drat. Um, well, I don't need these rocks. Ah, uh, but I want to collect up. Well, I want to collect up whatever sand is over here as well. Oh, and there's beans. Oh. Huh. Look at all the stuff growing out here. Oh, I know what happened. If we look at the... We're now in early autumn. Except I thought you didn't get new plants in autumn. I thought you only got them in spring and summer. Maybe that's another TNG change. Because it used to be... The, um, the biome would spawn uh, new, new crops, new crop plants. Uh, at the beginning of spring and at the beginning of summer, but not in fall or winter, autumn or winter. So maybe they now come up in, uh, and then in autumn as well. They certainly won't come up in winter. I mean, if the TNG guys have plants growing in winter, that would be ridiculous. So let's accelerate a bit here. Ooh, I'm racing the deer. Ooh, do I have my sword? I don't have my sword on me, do I? Hmm. Well, let's just hope I don't run into anything nasty. Uh, where are we? Almost there. Actually, let's just come around here. I think there's an opening up here. Do, 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 do. Oh, yeah, you can see it over there. That uh, does not look like anything good. That looks like conglomerate. Maybe nice, but I think it's conglomerate. Find out soon enough. Get rid of this. No, it's limestone. Holy. Almost said a swear word there. I mean, it's not like I haven't sworn on mine before. Well, this is handy. Wow. <laughs> that is pretty lucky. Like, usually, because what normally happens here is the geology in... TFC tries to make a little bit of sense. So you don't, you know, if you're in an area with a lot of metamorphic rock or, well, yeah, metamorphic, but let's say if you're in an area with a lot of igneous rock, then, you know, the next layer over also tends to be igneous. You know, obviously it will eventually change. But, you know, that's to simulate the fact that, uh, you know, Similar geological processes happen over the same localized area.
Yeah, let's uh, get rid of this sand. Okay, I'll just take a couple now. And, uh, and so limestone is a uh, metamorphic rock. And so I wasn't expecting just to find it right next door. That is so cool. It's going to make things a lot easier. I'll still demonstrate the uh, what I was talking about with doing the core samples, because we're going to have to do that for other things anyway. But, uh, but this certainly does simplify things for us. And I don't like that sound. Do, do, do. If I had my sword on me, I might consider confronting. Oh, yeah, you can see it's up there. Hang on. There he is up there. Looks like a tiger. Sabretooth. Yeah, well, you know, buddy, we'll meet again some other time. We'll meet again, don't know where, don't know when, but I'll have a sword in hand. Okay, let's get out of here. Am I even going the right way? Eh, more or less, more or less. Okay, see you back at, I was going to say the camp, but we have a home now, so we'll see you back home. Oh, geez, there's another one up there. Ah, deer, yes. Deer won't attack me. Will they? Okay, I'm back. Along the way, I ran into another blackberry bush. So we'll be able to expand our berry farm in a bit. And I still need to, at some point, run back over there and grab those tomatoes and see if any of the beans are ready. But right now, let's get back to our uh, core sample. So what I do is I just dig straight down a two wide hole and I stand on the edge between them so that if a hole should happen to open up beneath me I won't fall through because I'm supported on both sides. Let me get through this gravel. There we go. Throw down a torch here so we can see what we're doing. And then just dig my way down. Now if I want to, I could also use the uh, chisel first. And then, and then that way I would get a whole bunch more of the uh, smooth stone. But that's an extra step. <laughs> and right now I'm kind of in a hurry. So I'll just chisel, I'll just wail away at it with a pick for a while. So I'll bring you back in after I've gotten down to the point where I see a layer, a, a new layer of something. So this is all just andesite here right now. This is our surface layer. Oh, I guess I should demonstrate this as well. So the other thing I do when I take core samples is I do stop every now and then to just check with my prospector's pick to see if there's happens to be any ores ore around. In general, if I haven't seen ore on the surface, then I'm not going to run into it below either. But sometimes you do. Okay, I'll bring you back in. Well, I missed it, but somewhere along the line here, we got into Gabbro. This is Gabbro now. And the problem is that the, see, so picked up a bunch of Gabbro rocks. It was several layers up. And they're just very similar in color and to the uh, andesite. So I didn't, andesite's a little darker gray, but I just didn't notice it. So, well, we can work it out though. 64. So that was 32 layers up. That's actually pretty high. 
I guess I did start at sea level, which is the lowest land point. Huh. I had 64 ladders, minus 32, so it's just 32 down from the top. That's actually, that is pretty close. Usually it's, uh, well, actually I guess that does make about sense. It's around 100. What are we at now? Where's the XYZ? Uh, 96. Yeah, so it, no, it is kind of high. Anyway, that's good. Anyway, so yeah, so we can tell by the rocks that we're digging up that now we're into a different kind of rock gabbro. So that's our second layer. I probably don't have enough ladders to get down to the third layer, but through the magic of editing video, I will uh, acquire more ladders and I'll bring you in when we get to the third layer. Hopefully it'll be a little bit more visually different than what we have here. Oh yeah, you can see here we finally got into the third layer, and it's rhyolite, which is another igneous rock. So that makes sense, we've got three layers of igneous rock, we've got a surprisingly thin layer of uh, andesite on top, and then gabbro, and then this rhyolite. So, uh, the only thing of note is that gabbro is the only place where you can find the ore of nickel garnierite but i believe we actually found some garnierite wandering around so this so far has turned out to be a very nice seed for this series okay um that's probably going to be it for now uh off camera i'll complete the roof on the house and go and pick up those what I can of those tomatoes and beans that we found. And oh yeah, I guess I can point out a couple other things here is when you're mining the rocks you will occasionally get these gems. Um, you can get chips and this is a small garnet and then there's another one which is exquisite which is bigger. They have almost no use whatsoever. Um, there is a device that you can build that will uh, that will give you some protection against mobs spawning in your spawning in an area around the device, and those are powered by, I think chips. It might be small gems, but I believe it's chips, chips of gems. So that's the only use there is for gems, other than you know, if you like to give you a collectible, I guess if you want. Uh, the second thing I want to point out was. This way of mining straight down is pretty safe. Like I say, I stand on the border between the two blocks that I'm mining out. So if one opens up to a cavern below, I'm still have the other one preserving me. There is a small chance though, that if there's a cavern beside you or, um, or not too far below you, that your mining could start in, uh, an avalanche or cave-in rather, and that cave-in has very limited ability to propagate upward, but if the geometry is just right, that could propagate to the other block that you're standing on. So then there's a chance you could fall to your death, but other, but it's pretty low and rarely happens. Uh, the other thing you'll notice, I need to put one more in here, is I put in these blocks on the other side. Uh, I have fallen off of ladders in Minecraft. A surprising amount fall to my death so i put these in just so if i ever accidentally like kind of walk off i can only take so much damage <laughs> before so i hopefully won't die all right so that's it for this episode um it was a really lucky find finding that limestone so close to where we are that'll make it really easy we can turn that into flux and that allow us to uh, start moving further along the chain of war so that's probably what we'll look at next episode is we'll uh, look at starting to uh, look, look at getting doing some smithing so far we've been creating all of our tools by pouring them into molds and the eventual alternative you need to go to for the higher level metals is to smith them on an anvil so we'll start looking into that in the next episode i hope you enjoyed this one and uh, i hope to see you back in the next next episode bye now